Hello, everybody. Happy Friday morning here. TGIF. We made it to the end of the week. Congrats. All right. Lumberjack Dave coming at you right now. We've got a Cassie Randolph with her first sort of acknowledgement in response to Colton Underwood coming out of the closet. It's not salacious. It's not juicy. That's just not in her DNA. She's a kind person. She's very uh, media savvy. She knows uh, anything she says will be... uh, pulled apart by the media and you know what honestly when it comes time for her to do her tell all I hope that she cashes in I hope that she gets a kind of like a blockbuster book deal or a blockbuster interview deal something that can really uh kind of put some wind into her sails the way Colton did when he came out so for her story uh she just posted a new vlog today which I do have to recommend everyone to go check out Cassie Randolph's vlog she's um she's only done this for a little bit now but it's 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 kind of a nice wholesome thing to see it's not somebody kind of jamming products down your throats it's not like consumptuous living it's just a nice young woman who bought a townhouse and she's decorating it with some mid-century modern style, which is what uh, my fiance likes to insert into every conversation I have with her. And I still don't know what it is, but anyway, folks, so let's play this uh, acknowledgement that she makes with the Colton Underwood uh, issue. Uh, Again, she does this right at the top of her uh, vlog, sort of addresses it in a way that's not going to get much clickbait, but this is her uh, reaction. Welcome back. I'm going to give you guys a miniature home project tour this week and show you some new home stuff I've been doing. I'm actually coming to you from my new home. It's very empty as you can see. There's nothing at all going on yet. Before I get into anything, I just want to say thank you so much for all the kind comments and messages from you guys. Um, I really appreciate it. Regarding the um, topic in the media that brought my name up this week. Just want to let you know that I'm not going to be further discussing it or commenting on it um, for now. I just, there's a lot of layers to it and I just feel like the best thing for me at this time is to move forward and just focus on going forward. So if I do decide in the future to say anything or make a comment at all, you guys will be the first to know. But for now, I just wanted to say thank you for all the kind messages and comments and DMs and Although I I can't respond to all of you guys, I want you to know that I read them and I'm so um, thankful and I feel very loved and supported and I appreciate you guys so much. For the rest of this week, I... So that's the statement. That's what she opens up with. And, you know, she does say a lot within there. I'm not here just grasping at straws. She said the topic in the media. So she's refusing to give it a name, which is great. She's trying to move on with her life, guys. This is such a fresh, fresh story for her. I think it's really important that she's creating this vlog, that she can share her new life with people. I think that's going to be good for, um, I think that's going to be good for her, therapeutic, and also help build her own platform. So when it does come time for her to share her story, she's able to monetize it in a way that gets her, you know, and, and people look at money in a weird way when it comes to, Uh, you know, bachelor contestants becoming influencers. Like, how dare we care what they do with their platform or money? And I know what people say, oh, they only go on the show for love. Well, the show only, I'm sorry, they only go on the show to make money. Well, the show only exists to make money. So it's not like Chris Harrison's there for love. Everyone's cashing in on the capital L. So when it is time for her to to tell her story, I hope she gets a good paycheck. I hope she's able to promote whatever things she's working on. And I hope she feels comfortable doing it on her own terms. She's just a, she's a, she's a victim. She didn't ask for any of this. She didn't ask for the topic in the media. She says, I'm not discussing it for now. That's the old, um, dumb and dumber. What about that one in a million talk? You know, she says, I'm not discussing it for now. You have to imagine when, when it comes to processing information, you know, you feel hurt, sadness, anger, you feel resentment that, you know, my name's got to be Googled and this is all you see is something somebody else did and got away with it. And maybe the resentment towards whatever deals he's going to get. He bought a home. He's going to get, he's getting his home furnished from this platform that the bachelor gave him and this and that. There could come a time where the resentment builds up, where she feels empowered to be like, you know what? That really was messed up that he put a tracking device on my car, stalked and harassed me. It's time for me to tell my story. And it seems like a lot of people have said in the past, oh, she hasn't talked about it, so maybe they worked out some settlement. Well, she says, I'm not discussing it for now. So she leaves the door open slightly. She said, I'm going to focus on going forward, which is good for anybody in life. She left a clue within this video, and you know me. 
you know, Lumberjack Dave always looking for clues. I'm just scouring the forest for clues, and I found one, and I want to share it with you guys because, you know, on a good Friday, we like to be a little spiritual. We like to uh, share some love. So let me pull um, a few different clips up over here, and then we can uh, sort of see what she's thinking about, what she's talking about. Basically, my house has a oh, lot we're gonna of get an ad. century modern vibe to it. So there she goes, the mid-century modern talk. So I'm going to let this ad play out, and then um, I've got four separate very quick clips I'm going to play uh, in the next three seconds. But I really suggest everyone go over to Cassie's page, leave her a nice comment. Style, kind of a mid-century modern meets Bali, Indonesia, North Shore, Hawaii. I also kind of want to incorporate everything that I love into the style of my house, so like art, fashion beach my inspiration pieces for my house got this vase lots of books all right so there's the first one we got it right there are we picking up on this that's the four agreements right we can confirm this all right ladies and gentlemen breaking news here on the dave neal channel cassie randolph practices the four agreements it's a fantastic book you may know my friend tom brady you know greatest quarterback of all time not really my friend, uh, a boy can dream. He practices the four agreements. If you're not familiar, it's kind of life-changing in its simplicity. The four agreements are very simple. I'll read them for you. Uh, but the book actually can put uh, together some practical uh, ways to see uh, how you can put these uh, into your life. And I mean, think about Cassie right now as she's dealing with life. Think about how she might apply the four agreements. Be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Don't, this is an important one, don't take anything personally. No, nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. To put it bluntly, what you think about me ain't none of my business. Don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. Always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstances, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. So, that's book number one up top there. Maybe she didn't read it. Maybe it was a gift. Or maybe she's saying, you know what? I want to be impeccable with my word. I don't want to gossip about someone else. I want to control my own destiny. After several years of being a part of the Bachelor franchise where they get to script my story, I'm going to dust off the old iMovie get out the Canon G7X Mark II, and I am going to be the author of my story. To that I say, congratulations, Cassie Randolph, and to anyone else out there, take control. Stop setting limitations. You got this, folks. All right, let's jump over to 9 O's, or let's see what we got right here. Books. We got Bridget over here, looking good as always. Vintage-y type things. And then yesterday at that vintage thrift store, I got right, this right. record holder. Let's jump to 937. I don't know why I wrote this. There must be something here. Also, further on the um, thrift finds, I have found um, a few really cool things left in the alleys that I'm going to kind of... Yeah, Colton Underwood at 3 a.m. All right, moving on. 1055, found in the alley by her brother. I also have this under the stairs area that i'm trying okay to so this is interesting go to her page here she's got this i love this this under this under the stairs kind of harry potter uh mid-century modern harry potter look i don't know what that means going on right here and she was asking people what she should do with it i think she should set up some sort of lighting in there and maybe paint it in accent color and put a big bean bag and use that as her in the moment scene for when she's doing vlogs and she wants to set up like a story time scene that was my thought i don't know let me know what you guys think yeah. she should do i've got one more clip 1153 we'll let this ad play out she's got to get that ad revenue all right but not too much of it and then we'll go to 1053 here and see what the final clip is 1153 sorry 1153 let's see what this is 
mid-century modern book one another one of my inspiration pieces or mid-century modern a couple of pictures that look identical to certain parts of my house so the question really begs like what is mid-century modern five things you should know about the mid i'm not going to go through this i just don't get it it's just a term everyone says these days <laughs> i don't know maybe someone can explain it to me so this article right here i'm just going to read two paragraphs coming out doesn't excuse Colton Underwood's abusive past. You know, it's important when we talk about things and champion people that we, we keep on looking for the random and few people that are speaking out on a higher level about Colton Underwood. There's just a lot of chatter. There's a lot of rumbling. There's a, a couple of contestants that are speaking out, but not to the extent that like the, not big, big mainstream media. Sure, there's some cases. Well, bitchmedia.org uh, says Col uh, coming out doesn't excuse Colton Underwood's abusive past. When season 23 ended in 2018, Underwood began dating contestant Cassie Randolph. They remained together until 2020 when they parted ways on seemingly amicable terms. A judge issued a temporary order of protection against Underwood in September after Randolph accused him of harassing and stalking her. She said her ex-boyfriend sent her harassing text messages from anonymous phone numbers and even planted a tracking device under her car. She showed the photo. Regarding their relationship, Underwood told Roberts in his GMA interview, he wished he hadn't dragged people into my own mess of figuring out who I was. He apologized to Randolph for how things ended, saying he messed up and made a lot of bad choices. Yet when Roberts asked him if he was ever in love with Randolph, he said yes, without hesitation. He claimed he loved everything about her, but had an internal fight going on. Before continuing to apologize for his behavior, I would just say that I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. I'm sorry for any pain and emotional stress I caused. I wish it wouldn't have happened the way it did. I wish that I wouldn't be courageous enough to fix myself. I wish that I would have been courageous enough to fix myself before I broke anybody else. So then Robin Roberts, who is openly gay, seems sympathetic and supportive toward the reality star. She told her co-anchors that Underwood is not trying to make excuses for his behavior, but his own statements contradict her sentiment. For starters, the conversation about his abusive behavior was a sidebar in an interview focused on his difficult journey and the joy he feels now that he's accepted his sexuality. Beyond that, he was vague about what his behavior toward Randolph entailed, and he consistently centered himself in his apology. While he says he's sorry, he also seemingly believes the tumultuous nature of his relationship with Randolph was an inevitable part of unlearning internalized homophobia. Accepting this narrative is a disservice to queer folk who are or were closeted and have never abused their partners in the process of finding themselves. Underwood is yet another abusive man who has disclosed his trauma and mental health struggles in order to ex escape accountability. In 2017, actor Anthony Rapp accused Kevin Spacey of sexual misconduct when Rapp was still a minor. In response, Spacey tweeted, I honestly do not remember the encounter. It would have been over 30 years ago. But if I did behave as he describes, I owe him the sincerest apology for what would have been deeply and inappropriate drunken behavior. And I am sorry for the feelings he describes having carried with him all these years. Spacey also said that rap story encouraged him to open up about being a gay man. So there it is, folks. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's like diverting the flood into a, you know, recess pool. No, no, no. Let the flood, let the flood, you know, See if you can sink or swim. No, 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 no. You do not get to choose to hide under the rainbow. Kick rocks, Wanda Sykes tweeted. Sarah Kate Ellis, president and chief executive officer of GLAAD, said in a statement, coming out stories should not be used to deflect from allegation of sexual assault. This is not a coming out story about Kevin Spacey, but a story of survivorship by Anthony Rapp and all those who bravely speak out against unwanted sexual advances. The media and public should not gloss over that. By conflating his sexual identity with his predatory behavior, Spacey was also feeding into the perception of gay people as child molesters. Coming out as gay man is not the same thing as coming out as someone who preyed on a 14-year-old. So that's for Kevin Spacey and with Colton Underwood. Coming out as a gay man is not the same as coming out as someone who stalked and harassed your ex and went into her alley and followed her to her parents' house and showed up at 3 a.m. and created fake phone numbers and put a tracking device under the trunk of your car. Don't conflate the two. It's a disservice to all of our friends and family who have come out of the closet um, as gay uh, and have struggled with their own issues but didn't stalk and harass their ex. This exposes the gay community to a million tired old criticisms and conspiracies. The distance we've had to walk to get away from the notion that we're all pedophiles is significant. 
for a famous person to deflect these accusations with a long in the making coming out is so cruel to a supposed new community, it stings. In 2018, several women accused, so then it's just other stories of a similar situation. To accept any disclosure of trauma, addiction, or sexuality as a rationaliz- rationalization for abusive behavior is unfair and stigmatizing to people that go through the same without inflicting trauma on others. I think this article does a really good job of explaining in ways I couldn't when you see the fraudulent nature of sort of coming out without addressing some of the dark recent things from your past. Uh, You do not get to pass go and collect $200. The conversation doesn't get to end because you're now in a new kind of grouping. The conversation still exists. Maybe this will shine light into the domestic violence issues within the gay community, which are often also glossed over because people, I think, have more sympathy for the heterosexual uh, domestic violence abuse stories when we know that in the gay community, it's also something that needs, you know, addressing as well. Well, with all this said, we're really talking about Cassie Randolph and we're happy for her and we're happy that there are people like Bitch Media that are coming to her defense and understanding like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, you ever have those types of conversations where it, it, it removes so far from the thesis that you're like, whoa, 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 reel this puppy in, hold on. No, 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 no. He's still X, Y, and Z regardless of coming out as this. A lot of just reshuffling of the deck that needs to go down to explain this. Not rocket science. So we got our four agreements in. So don't forget, be impeccable with your word. My favorites um, that don't take anything personally. We control within us the ability to react to external situations. We control what can be a stoicism, an ability to breathe deeply during adverse moments and not lash out in a reptilian sort of violent way. Of course, Cassie didn't have that luxury with Colton not taking things personally as he tried to make a relationship work after she had set healthy boundaries and said it wouldn't. So he, I mean, he could benefit from everything in the four agreements. Um, But when it comes to uh, me and to you out there, just remember if you're going down the highway and someone cuts you off, it's on you how you respond. Don't suffer to try to win someone, you know, the, the rage and anger we pass on to our, our, our lovers and our kids. And it's just, that's unneeded and it's a low form of energy. And we possess the strength inside of us to control how we react to not only negativity, but all situations. So anyway, folks, if you want to check out my vlog, this is it right here. I just released a new episode yesterday. Tasha got emotional when we got our first vaccine shot. As you can see, um, a lot of people have related to this feeling of getting the vaccine and feeling like you've made it to this weird finish line when a lot of people never did. And it's a heavy burden unleashed. It was a real special vlog that we made, um, not just talking about the vaccine, but new um, mid-century modern things that we're buying. We've got the whole backyard set up. So if you want to follow home decoration along with my stand-up comedy and just couples doing their things, uh, you can go check out the vlog, Dave Neal Vlogs. I'll put, post a link in the description. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. And uh, if you want, leave a phone number. Here it is right now. You can call me, 401-213-9828. I play voicemails over the weekend. Just call and say hi. Ask any questions, give me some answers. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye now.